uh, that we are conducting this webinar today. Um, I will share, first of all, we, we will start off with a small video to give you a visual impression how our school looks like. Uh, as Bo mentioned, we are in the middle of the so-called Greater Bay Area. Uh, that's really one of the very rapidly developing economic centers in, in Asia, I would say. Uh, and there are many connections actually to the countries you are coming from. So the, the business world here is really internationalized. So is the education. So I, I will go through this with a couple of PPT slides later. Um, I do prefer not to be a talking head. So during my presentation, if you come across any quick questions, etc., please just write a short comment and then maybe uh, Bo can remind me. Exactly. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to interrupt and, and directly respond yeah, okay. to, to uh, quick follow-ups or if I'm not clear. So please do not hesitate to interrupt me. That's no problem. Yeah, absolutely. Today, okay. we, uh, I think today then... we'll do it uh, differently like that. If you, anyone got any questions, you can ask uh, at any time. Uh, we really want to keep the discussion open. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so let me share my screen. So we start off with a small video uh, and then i will later upload uh, our ppt sorry my computer broke down for a minute can you still hear me yes okay i'm, I'm very sorry for that i no i do not know why? Um, okay. You will have to help me to open the video, Jesse. No. Give me a moment. My video disappeared. No problem. No problem. No, I need our promotional video and it does not show. Yeah, films. Ah, maybe this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, sorry for that. No problem. Um, okay, let's go. Have you ever thought of your ideal university? Have you dreamt of being a liberal arts college student? It is a journey where you explore your intelligence, skills, and potential to become inspired to think outside the box, as well as to express yourself, to face the challenge and work hard to achieve your goals. It is also a haven to carry out interdisciplinary studies in arts and sciences, to appreciate both Chinese and Western cultures, to develop, to innovate, and to excel. It is a forest that has many paths. It is a round table where different minds meet. It is inspirational, diverse, and integrated. In knowledge and in deeds, 
unto the whole person. This is your university life, your unique journey. At UIC, create your own university life. Start here, go anywhere. Okay, um, so that was our short video. I will open now our PPT and then we will take it from there. Right. Fantastic video. It's such a, it's such a really big campus and a great, um, great uh, community feel on campus as well. It really looks like that. Yeah, it uh, it is really a, a very beautiful campus. Um, I saw many campuses in um, China. Yeah, sure uh, I, <laughs> I believe without bragging about our school, it's really one of the most beautiful campuses I yeah. I know. Yeah. And um, it's brand new. So I, I will start with the PPT now. Fantastic. Let me see how I can go to the full screen. You can go uh, slide slideshow um, view yeah. show. It's just my my bar. This one. Okay. Here we go. Perfect. So. <laughs> um, as you see on on our title page, um, the school just turned fifteen, and. Um, but our campus is brand new. So we moved to this campus uh, really in 2017 and we are still growing. You will see that later in the show. So I, I will repeat a little bit of the information Bo already mentioned, uh, and then we go through the programs, etc. cetera. Um, as already mentioned, UAC was founded as the fir first full-fledged cooperation between mainland China and Hong Kong. And actually the school was really born out of a dream of two very experienced and famous educators, both in mainland China and Hong Kong. And UIC was created as an alternative to the traditional Chinese university. So we do not want to replace the traditional public university, but UIC was really founded as a liberal arts college with a liberal arts curriculum. And of course the goal was to be international from the very outset uh, which means we are a completely English-speaking school. Um, we were founded in 2005 and we really had very small beginnings like most similar schools like us. We started with around 300 students. Uh, by now we have more than 7,000, which means uh, really shows the growth over the years. And this is also why we got um, support from the government to build a brand new campus, which integrates the educational concept UAC is based on. Um, here you have a, a short bird's eyes view of our campus outset. So for UAC, the location is in Zhuhai, as Bo mentioned. So we're in the south of China and Zhuhai is basically the bordering city to Macau on the mainland side. We are now connected with this uh, new, the biggest bridge of the world to Hong Kong, which under non-pandemic reasons will allow people traveling between Zhuhai and Hong Kong within one hour. Uh, we are connected to the whole region and actually whole China by now with the high-speed railway uh, stations all over Zhuhai. So uh, in the near future, it's, it's also less than one hour to go to Shenzhen, less than an hour to go to Guangzhou. Uh, while Zhuhai, Zhuhai itself is remaining a, a very beautiful coastal city. Uh, Zhuhai is very clean. It's known for its clean air uh, and very green environment while being in the middle of really very vibrant cities with great job opportunities uh, for young people in all areas of and disciplines actually. So there are huge programs who try to attract talent from all over the world in the region, which means also young talents can get a lot of support from the local authorities after their graduation in the region. Um, on the left-hand side, you see our current campus. 
On the right hand side, this is what I mentioned, we keep on growing. Uh, this will be our stage two campus. Uh, we start building this in, around May this year. Um, we will be adding uh, research facilities to our existing layout and our existing curriculum, which started off as a very undergraduate and student oriented teaching curriculum. So uh, we are a completely student centered university. Uh, but of course, like all higher education institutions, research is playing a big role, needs to be integrated in the ongoing teaching and learning activities. Uh, and also uh, we are building a graduate school. So we have a first cohort of uh, master level students, for example, on campus now. Um, here's the bridge I mentioned, and um, here's too high on, on the map. Um, it is really a, a very, nice city it's always in all rankings in at least the top three of the most livable cities in china uh, the climate is subtropical which means uh, it, the temperatures will never drop very low all year round uh, the summers obviously are hot and humid uh, but all classrooms dormitories etc is all air conditioned so it's not a problem for students or staff members um, so the mission of UAC was really to develop a liberal arts college that is uh, dedicated to producing well-rounded global talents. So uh, that is really a commitment. And we try to develop not only the students in, in the academic major, they will have a lot, a lot of co-curricular, extracurricular learning opportunities uh, to explore other talents than in their major and also to to get a broader view on on things that are going on so the commitment is really to um, let graduates into a world where they can collaboratively solve problems we are all facing together etc um, of course uh, we have very strict academic standards uh, for example our all complete quality assurance mechanism is um, going through Hong Kong Baptist University, one of our parental institutions. So everything will go through very strict quality assurance procedures. Um, teaching language in UAC is English. So all content classes are taught in English, while of course, international students will have the opportunity to learn or get more proficient in Chinese language. So that's also a, a very important part. Um, we are really rooted in excellent undergraduate education. So uh, our senior management, we also participate in many uh, sessions on how to improve undergraduate education, uh, train skills, independent learning, creativity, uh, all, all that what our future graduates will need to be successful in their future lives. Our current president, uh, that's our second president, is Professor Tang Tao. Um, he's a very renowned mathematician and a member of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, as well as chair professor of our Mathematical Research Center. And he took on uh, his duties last year, no, the year before last year, and uh, has really very, very ambitious plan to develop our school into uh, a high-end liberal arts college. Um, UIC has four divisions. So sometimes people say, well, liberal arts college, is that only humanities? No, it is not. Um, so actually our biggest division is our division of business and management. So uh, many of our students will choose a major. I will show you the majors later. We do have a division of humanities and social sciences. Um, we have a division of science and technology that currently is the fastest growing division with all the developments going on in artificial intelligence and big data science, et cetera. And we have a division of culture and creativity. Um, supplemented are those divisions by a general education office, an English language center, our whole person education office, our Chinese language center, and then we have research centers in different divisions um, addressing certain uh, research problems, also employing some postgraduate students for research. In business and management, um, we, we do have quite uh, a comprehensive list. So our accounting program, for example, is quite famous. Our students win competitions every year. 
uh, they also get CKPA qualifications from Hong Kong and Australia. Um, we have applied economics, finance, management of human resources, marketing management. Our newest programs are entrepreneurship and innovation and e-business management information systems uh, to integrate new skills from data science, etc. cetera. Um, our division of science and technology has computer science and technology, data science, applied psychology, food science and technology, environmental science, statistic, financial mathematics, and our newest major is applied mathematics. Uh, we expect that we will have more new majors like artificial intelligence in the next one or two years to come. In humanities and social sciences, we have public relations and advertising, media and communication studies, globalization and development, social administration, English language and literature studies and applied translation studies. And in our division of culture and creativity, we have media arts and design, cinema and television, culture, creativity and management, and we have a new music performance program. Uh, we are also expecting that we have, we will have more uh, majors, for example, in animation for film and film music, for example. Um, our curriculum is outcome-based. Um, so if you, for example, know Hong Kong Baptist University, um, it's quite similar. So at the end of our education, there will be graduate attributes and those graduate attributes will need to be addressed by all program outcomes and also uh, the course structures, which means we are not very focused on the final examinations. So students will have a lot of formative assessment during the semester and then maybe uh, a not so highly rated final examination. It is feedback based and all assignments and assessments need to address a learning outcome. So students will have a very clear impression about the expectations of a course. They will have access to the syllabi, et cetera, um, to really find out what, what is um, expected in terms of performance. Um, our normal semester teaching load or course load for students is between 15 and 21 units. Uh, units is similar to credits. Um, so that is five to seven courses at UIC. Normally one course has three units. Uh, that would be a normal load for a full-time student. Um, it will be distributed between the major and also um, I mentioned our general education office. So students have to fulfill a general education curriculum plus uh, in, in their first year, they will have some intensive English language training uh, to work up their skills, for example, to write academic papers in, in English, et cetera. So they will get a lot of support to develop their English language skills. Our current tuition is 90,000 Chinese yuan, yuan per year. And accommodation in China is uh, not expensive compared to other study abroad destinations. So currently that will be around 4,000 Chinese yuan in a three bedroom. I will show some photos of our dormitories later. Um, all courses, except some of our whole person education courses, which focus on experiential learning are taught in English. Um, and uh, students will have a four years undergraduate degree. So it's a four years curriculum like in US liberal arts colleges. So we do not have the option currently that students shorten their study experience to three years, for example. So normal length will be a four years undergrad degree. Um, for international students, uh, we have a set of basic criteria. Um, I just listed them there. It, it really depends on the home country. Of course, we accept IB diploma, we accept G GCE qualifications, Cambridge PU uh, diploma, BTEC, um, SATs, and we also have advanced placements, for example, for 
associate degree holders, etc. That would be on a case by case basis. So we would evaluate the former teaching experience of a student and see how we can position that student. Um, we sorted out for this session today uh, what are the criteria for the countries, at least some of the countries who are represented in this meeting. Uh, we are very happy to share our complete list via Yes Education to you uh, if you want to know your country specific entry requirements. So um, basically, to, to put it in a nutshell, we expect that a student has had at least 12 years education experience before entering UIC and has adequate knowledge of the English language to thrive in an English speaking environment. Um, so I, I think the entry requirements are not very complicated. Uh, it becomes more important, for example, the grades or, or GPA standards when it comes to scholarships, which are based on academic performance. Um, so supporting documents students would need to give to you and uh, yes, education will help us to collect from, from qualified applicants. Uh, we normally will need uh, a graduate certification of a high school, which proves that this student had 12 years of formal pre-university education, uh, ideally with transcripts, especially if that student plans to apply for one of our scholarships. Um, a recommendation letter uh, that depends on, on your country or your school. I know many high schools do have education counselors who work with students during their last year uh, to find a good fit. Of course, we want to make sure that the student makes a good choice when choosing UAC. Uh, a short personal statement. Then, of course, we need a passport copy uh, and then language certification if not covered by, by the uh, high school diploma. And our current application deadline would be 30th of June. That is comparatively early, but uh, it takes a long time to process the visa work for international students. So if you're already working with Chinese schools, then you will know that we need sufficient time to prepare all paperwork. So we will assist the students and really guide them step-by-step step through the whole procedure, including arrival package, uh, sharing pre-departure information, holding a webinar, what they have to prepare for, etc. cetera. Um, we are very happy that we have um, this year for the first time to this extent, we set up scholarships for international students um, to make it easier for students to join UIC. Um, we get a lot of interest actually, but um, we are also aware that our tuition fee is not exactly low. So um, we set up new scholarship schemes, especially for students from Southeast Asia and, and Belt and Road countries, because we believe that China is really um, a very interesting destination, also for future collaboration and, and their future careers. So there's a clear trend also when we see what our students are doing after their graduation. Uh, a lot of work opportunities are arising in the Asia Pacific region. Um, we do have colleagues from all different Southeast Asian countries. So we think it's really a, a good way uh, for international students to get to know China better. Uh, to connect with our students and their families and to learn about the region, the country, but also, of course also history, culture, language, etc. So we have a certain range of full scholarships uh, that is really for high achievers. So if you screen an excellent student, um, we will consider an application for full scholarship and uh, this is based on rolling admission and which means we do not have limit less resources. Um, so basically it will work on a first come first base <clears throat> basis if an applicant is qualified. Uh, we have quite an amount of 30% scholarships on tuition for applicants from Southeast Asia. Uh, I think that is very attractive. Um, every year we will get in addition scholarships from the Department of Education in Guangdong province. That's uh, another 10,000 RMB. 
um, the quota is not out yet for the coming year, so we have to submit applications and then we will have to see how, how much of those scholarships we can grant. And then, of course, after entering our college, uh, which student ever can meet uh, internal scholarship requirements? Uh, they have the same access to other scholarships in the school like our local students. So there is no difference between international students or Chinese students. They, they have the same rights and also the same duties. <laughs> After the four years, uh, and that's also a very attractive fact, our students will get the bachelor's degree from Hong Kong Baptist University. And actually the degree they earn in USC is exactly the same, like HKBU plus a graduation certificate from UIC. Uh, this is, for example, for Chinese students, very important that they have this kind of certification. For international students, it is less important, but they will have both. Um, our faculty is very internationalized, so one third of our staff comes from Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan. Uh, around 30% are from overseas countries. We have 30 countries represented currently, and currently 36% are from mainland China. It somehow also reflects our Greater Bay Area and the collaboration opportunities in, in this region. Um, we do have students from the mainland. Um, most of our students are from the mainland, but they are from all parts of China. So UAC is also a mirror of the cultures of China. So there are quite some differences between students, for example, from Inner Mongolia and Yunnan. So it's also an interesting experience for students to meet people from all over China. Uh, we, we admit students from Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan, and of course, international students who are currently a minority, and we hope to change this in our next uh, initiatives. Um, after graduation, so what, what are UAC graduates doing, or how can they develop their career opportunities while being with us? Um, UAC is a typical place where actually more than 70% of our graduates will go on master's programs and we have highly developed um, support mechanisms to uh, help them find placements in graduate schools. So more than 50% of those 70% will be in top 100 schools after their graduation. Uh, UAC built some reputation over the years that uh, our graduates really will do excellent jobs in master's programs. Uh, and they will get really good placements. We hold a post-credit fair every year where partners or schools come uh, to hold briefing sessions with students, etc. cetera. Um, our alumni network now is more than 10,000 students and they are really all over the world. Um, in order to support students better and that is service that is accessible for international students as well as for our mainland students. Uh, UAC has since last year, the so-called Career Development Office. Um, this office individually uh, supports students in their academic development. So they hold workshops, how to uh, polish up your resume, uh, how does your um, application portfolio have to look like, uh, they will have one-to-one -one consultations also for internship placements. Uh, they also try to help students to find internship opportunities in addition to the division. So in many cases, every program has relationships to related enterprises and companies and will help the students, but we also have a centralized unit to uh, help the students for further study, internship, or um, job opportunities. For example, uh, last year, Tencent uh, was asking for applications of international students. So they some, some companies will recruit internationals and uh, definitely also inform us because that's exactly what they are looking for. Young people who do understand China, know some Chinese, but also have an international background. Um, we collaborate in one way or 
the other with institutions around the world, which means students who come to us will not remain four years on campus if they do not wish to. Uh, we, we run a semester exchange programs. One of the most popular formats for our students are our summer programs. So for example, in we are allowed to send up to 20 students to Yale University so they can already during their undergraduate time have an experience of, for example, an Ivy League school. Uh, but there are many choices, uh, also really depending on the interest and major of the students. So we really try to cater to all kinds of interests and qualifications. Um, all international students are required to learn Chinese. Um, and of course, we hope normally international students who wish to study in UAC <laughs> have a, a, a very um, authentic interest in China, so they will be very keen in participating, but uh, it's also formalized. So uh, students will have uh, formal Chinese language courses and cultural courses. Uh, this is organized by our Chinese language center and they also organize some co-curricular activities. So we will always have a, a talent competition in Chinese language or some field trips, etc., to explore the history uh, of the region. We have some quite some uh, UNESCO World Heritage Sites in the region. Uh, so we will try to uh, give the students uh, a picture. Um, apart from our academic curriculum, UAC is very vibrant with student clubs. Um, currently we have more than 60 different interest clubs. So, uh, and the range is really from musical singing, orchestra, sports, um, investment competitions, et cetera. So um, there's really a lot of things students can get engaged in. Uh, we also have a soup kitchen run by students, et cetera. So for all kinds of interests, there will be at least one club where they can find new friends and practice Chinese and, and just have so, social interaction. Um, we also have a lot of experiential arts on campus. So we have pottery studios, drawing, painting, calligraphy. Um, UAC also um, really tries to support students to learn, for example, classical Chinese instruments or sports. So we have Chinese archery, etc., like the classical arts in the Confucian tradition. Uh, so if students are more interested in the traditional arts work or sports, uh, we also can accommodate this. Um, yeah, those are a few pictures of our campus. So UAC is not a downtown campus. So we are at the outskirts of Zhuhai City in the middle of Green Hills and Lychee Gardens. It's a very safe and green study environment. Um, the campus is enclosed, so we have 24-7 security, obviously. At the same time, UAC is operating shuttle buses for the students so that they can go downtown for shopping or eating, etc. Um, this is, for example, our learning resources center. So that's really a high-end library um, where students also can book meeting rooms. We have huge digital collections. We also have one of the biggest English language collections uh, in the region, plus very nice facilities and working space for the students, computer working stations where they can work on their projects, homework, or whatever they're into. Um, undergraduate students in China are required to live on campus. So, um, International students will live together with our students in the dorms. Uh, we do not separate international students, so they will have roommates from China. Um, for We think it is better not to separate international students uh, because our students are really very welcoming, very outgoing, very curious, and they're the best helpers a student could wish for. So that in the beginning, they will be the buddies of an arriving student, help them find their ways around, and actually also providing them with information and interests I might not be aware of. Uh, and like this, our international students also easily get access to circles of friends, et cetera. Um, the dormitories are 
pretty much a standard what you would expect. So typically we will have three bedrooms. Every bedroom has an, a bathroom, private bathroom, so no shared uh, shower or WC facilities. On each floor of the dorms, there will be a kitchenette and a common room uh, and laundry services. On campus, our campus is organized like a small city. Students can find everything what they need for their daily needs. So we have supermarkets, um, shops, tea shops, coffee shops, uh, of course, canteens, including uh, hairdressing, etc. So um, if they do not want to leave the campus, they do not need to actually. Um, here's just some impressions of the student cafeterias. <clears throat> the cafeterias serve all kinds of food. So from Chinese cuisine to uh, some Western style food. Uh, we also have um, something like Subway sandwich, for example, and um, we are in the close neighborhood uh, with a very big university uh, where students can find even more options if they're willing to walk maybe 15 minutes. Um, one of the highlights for, for student life is definitely our sports complex. So we have indoor and outdoor facilities, both brand new. Um, so we have an Olympic size swimming pool with 25 degrees all year round. We have huge fitness centers for the students, tennis courts, basketball courts, badminton, etc. Students can either sign up for courses or for, for, um, or have a, an access card and there will be, for example, hours where the facilities can be used for free. That would be early morning. <laughs> or for a very small fee, they have access to all kinds of facilities. Um, here's the outside view of our culture and creativity cluster. So here are our orchestra practice rooms. We have quite some piano practice rooms. Uh, we have very high-end music instruments on campus, so students can uh, book those practice rooms. We have a gallery for students' artwork. Um, many so-called staff and students activity centers. So students are encouraged also to come up with their own activities. Uh, our students, for example, organize concert series, um, singing competitions, art exhibitions, but also environmentally friendly. So the last big student project was uh, to have a environmental friendly uh, campus, etc. So students will be involved in all kinds of activities going on on campus. Um, this is it in in short. Um, I would welcome questions from Great. the audience. Thank, Thank you. you so much for the presentation, Katarina. Very very good. And um, yeah, what a what a great um, what a great presentation. And it was really clear about uh, UIC and, and um, great to see all the. Uh, the mission of the school as well is so uh, internationalized as well. And I think um, what um, what the director has in mind um, uh, is, re is really, really inspiring as well. Um, so yeah, if anyone has um, any any questions, also Jamie has a question. Um, how many intakes are there per year? Um, so I believe this is the of one- students in, general. in general? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, last year we had an intake of 1,700 students. Uh, oh, that was uh, one of the. Uh, J Jamie means uh, like how many different intake? Like when can students uh, enter the program? I believe this is the one intake. Ah, 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 okay, okay, sorry. Yeah, uh, we we only admit international students in fall. So new admissions is is in fall, which means uh, in in the cycle we are now. The applications we get until the end of June, those students would start their four years degree in fall. Uh, the only exception are so-called transfer students. So once in a while we get applications from students who want to transfer from University A to B. Uh, that might happen in a summer term, but normally we have uh, once a year, that is fall. And for freshmen, there will be, uh, it will start one week earlier because we have an in intensive orientation week and ice breaking activities, et cetera, to, to make students comfortable with their new life as college students. And then um, Imelda from uh, eColleague asks, um, 
can you elaborate uh, on the tuition fee uh, at UIC? So the 90,000 uh, renminbi is around um, 14,000 USD um, per yes. year. And then you've got 4,000 renminbi per year for accommodation, which is quite right. Effective, I've got to say, like compared to other universities, 4,000 renminbi is around five to 600 USD. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Our um, cost in, uh, of living in our dormitories is is uh, comparatively low. Uh, mm -hmm. Our tuition fee is high. Um, why is that so? <clears throat> UAC is a is a private college, non for profit, which means we do not um, or we cannot rely on direct government subsidies. Which means. Um, this is why the tuition is higher. And the other reason is since we are a liberal arts college, our class size is much smaller than in our public universities. So, um, for example, language courses are rarely bigger than 20 students per class. And that's really a small class size for China. So UAC really avoids to have those 800 people lectures. So uh, the 90,000 is what it cost actually yeah, quite, I think, quite, also I think, we are quite in the same quite price recently. range of similar institutions so um but definitely really reasonable. it does not include books for example so for example if if students or interested parents have questions to you what does that cover uh, that is really tuition on campus um what will be the extra if a student really decides to come uh, one is the dormitory there will be a very small fee for insurance if there's a high safety need on side of the student um, we recommend to have extra international health insurance so there will be basic insurance coverage but for example for traveling abroad etc there, there will need to be bought extra insurance um, students will have to purchase their books uh, the range is from not very much maybe around uh, five US dollar for a textbook. Uh, some imported books might be a little bit more expensive and then plus meal fees. So UAC uh, does not offer meal plan plans like American colleges, for ex example. Um, so the meal fee will really very much depend on the preference of the students. So you can have a decent meal for around 15 RMB in UAC. That's a little bit more than two US dollars. But of course, if you uh, want to eat seafood or something, you can easily spend more. But I would say around 20 for a meal uh, should be calculated. And then depending on breakfast, etc. cetera. Um, in general, cost of living is, is moderate. Um, Many students will have, if they do not have before, WeChat and Taobao, so many things can be purchased online. Um, for these areas, it's very hard for us to make an estimate because that really depends on the budgeting of the students. So we have students who really lead a high-end life and take a taxi anywhere, others don't. Um, if they want to live on a low budget, just an example, our shuttle bus operates to a central train and bus station and every ride on a public bus in Zhuhai costs one Chinese yuan. So you can, for example, transportation is really not expensive if you take public transportation and the network is really good in Zhuhai. Yeah. Um, what about um, just adding on to that question with the tuition fees? Mm -hmm. um, what, one of the um, big questions that we get as well for an international program like yours is what about the Chinese um, uh, language uh, program, like if a student wants to um, stu study a little bit of Chinese in, um, in their program as well, um, would there be an extra charge um, for that? No, no, for international students uh, that is integrated. So basically yeah. um, our own students have to fulfill a certain graduation requirement in Chinese language and culture. So our students will take university Chinese. Uh, yeah. So uh, since we are in the mainland, we have to educate our students in a certain 
way, of course, also in their mother tongue, and it's not coming automatically to develop your skills in your mother tongue if you have no formal education. Uh, to replace this, uh, we organize language courses for international students, and that's part of the standard curriculum, so that does not cost any extra. Yeah, and that's a that's a fantastic opportunity for your your students that want to study in China. That's all within uh, the tuition fee, so that's really good, uh, really good yeah, value. And, as well. and we really do hope um, actually we, we have a new program under approval. So we will also have an academic program in that area. And in some programs we are developing minors. So uh, we, we do believe that's a, a way forward that students really can get a very formal qualification in Chinese language and culture as an add on to, for example, a business major or computer major. Um, in addition, our, our students are really outgoing. So if international students are looking for a language partner uh, or even colleagues, um, there's a lot of informal learning going on as well. Absolutely. So yeah. um, next qu question, we have a few um, here. How is the number of international students from South Asia? At, at, at Currently very low. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We have uh, we have one um, PhD student from Bangladesh. We have one master degree student from Bangladesh. We have several postdocs from India. Um, currently, none of them is on campus because of the ongoing COVID nineteen. In general, just uh, UAC is uh, doing intensive international student recruitment for the first time, which means if your students ask, is there a vibrant community of international students on campus? Um, to be honest, not yet. But the clear advantage is um, they will be much better integrated into the the Chinese students' body. Uh, we have several students from Korea. Uh, we have one U.S. student degree seeking uh, Venezuela currently, uh, and we hope that we can relaunch our exchange programs very soon. So we we have quite a number of students coming for maybe one semester or one year to study at UIC. And the support and organization for international students is basically IDO office is their home. So we are their family and we will also um, organize activities for them. Um, for example, international festivals. So depending on, on the group of nationalities, we will also try to include uh, intercultural learning for those students and and maybe celebrate some some important festivals like Diwali and uh, things like this so um, which means they are a minority but they are a minority in a very open-minded environment uh, we have several teaching staff members from Malaysia uh, also Bangladesh India Nepal currently not uh, but uh, I have a feeling it's going to be more in the future. Um, and he he also he or she also asked another question. Fall is what month of the year? So fall is the September um, se September yeah. September in China. That that is that is fall. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's there's a little variation in our academic calendar. So which uh, this is why we did not give a, a hard date depending on the Chinese Lunar New Year. Yeah. Uh, there their shifts but normally uh, students will be expected to arrive around the end of august and yeah. for international students a couple of days earlier because um, my office we will take the time to really um, show the students around give them a campus tour city tour etc yeah Fantastic. and then uh, maybe before the whole thing starts but then the semester is normally running until january so we are now we, we just had the great report released today. And then according to Chinese Lunar Year, New Year, the students will be on a break and we, we resume next spring on February 21st. That is uh, comparatively late. So there can be a shift of a couple of weeks. Um, this is sometimes difficult for students who want to celebrate Christmas or staff members. So Christmas very often is examination time at UIC. Um, the next question is from Retno from uh, Indonesia. Um, do you mix international students with domestic students in one classroom? Of course. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole. Uh, it's, it's really, that's, the whole uh, that's part of, 
that's uh, that's really part of our mission um and and we are we are really believers on that front uh, we want young people to study together to learn together the only exception would be the chinese begin beginners language classroom um but then they might find friends from other classes to help with the learning but all other classes are mixed yeah uh, Megan, uh, Megan Sue asked about internships. So maybe you could talk a little bit about um, what sort of internship opportunity or graduate opportunities there are in China um, and how should students go about um, doing something, something like that? The thing is for international students, so um, in the region, in the Greater Bay Area, is really a host of many multinational companies and many of the big tech companies like like tencent etc uh, also many banks and chamber of commerce etc um, we have quite a long list of more or less famous employers that depends so some companies are really only in in, in china famous um, that accepted uic students um, so i i cannot say that we have a a confirmed quota and can guarantee but uh, as i mentioned we have this career development office so uh, they have really uh, dedicated staff members who will work with the individual student and try to find a work placement uh, one thing i mentioned the faster a student is picking up on chinese language skills the easier because in, in some working contexts you need to have at least some operational chinese language skills uh, in other companies they explicitly looking for for someone uh, with good english skills so which means uh, that really depends on the major of the student here are many businesses many it companies uh, for example tencent is recruiting international graduates um, so for example if students or potential applicants have questions i'm happy to forward those questions <laughs> because we have so many majors now and all of them have individual contacts but yeah. uh, we really have a whole team working on internships during their time in uic and then work placements after after work um, in addition to our postgraduate fair um, there's also an employment fair where hr offices of companies will present their company and the career opportunities in, in their enterprise. So we, we try to support this and uh, we are actually currently growing that area fastly. Career fairs are really exciting like that uh, in China. I've been to some myself and my international student friends in China also talk a lot about um, um, career fairs. And I think being in Zhuhai, like right at that confluence, uh, right near Macau, near Hong Kong, um, yeah. not far away from Guangzhou as well, Zhongshan, all of those major cities, there's so much going on. I have to yeah. stress that uh, to everyone and really a lot of uh, different headquarters in, in different fields as well. There's, um, you know, it's, the, the opportunities are really limitless there. Um, at this and point. there were also some very good uh, uh, news on, on the visa and immigration side. Uh, yeah. For many years, it was um, not possible, for example, to to uh, work in a paid internship in China on a yeah. student visa. So there were very uh, restrictive uh, implementation of the visa, which sometimes really worked not in the, to the advantage of an international student since this year. Mm. Uh, for example, if a student wants to do an internship in a Chinese company, we, we can uh, register this with their visa. So we, we, we will have to follow a procedure um, and we will have to Buy extra insurance for that student uh, that's really a, a legal thing um, schools yep. in china have a lot of responsibility for their students so mm -hmm. we we take this very serious seriously so we we really uh, try everything to have them safe here yeah but on the other hand now uh, there's really a legal option for for a internships and also a future employment so the regulations are less restrictive now and and also clearly a signal from the government open doors policies um, with neighbors, partners, friends uh, from the Asia Pacific region. So there, there are really very clear signals that uh, okay. students from from everywhere, but especially also from Southeast Asia and Asia are yeah. very welcome. Yeah, 
definitely. And I think the future will be more um, open as well. It's really good to see the signals. Yeah. So um, just quickly, we're going a little bit um, over time. Um, could you yeah. quickly, um, one question, could you share more specifics on the demographics, especially the top nationalities, um, e.g. 90% mainland China or 5% Taiwan, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you could quickly share the demographics, then we've got um, one, two, three. Oh, got a few more questions, so we'll have to go quick. Okay, uh, of our faculty? Yes. The demographics? Yeah. Okay, um, um, for Hong Kong, Taiwan, Macau, I, I think majority of those 30 plus percent is from Hong Kong. Also has to do with our relationship to Hong Kong Baptist University also is part of the program to strengthen the Greater Bay Area. So there are many new initiatives to strengthen collaboration between Hong Kong and the mainland. Uh, overseas staff members, um, we, we do have 30 countries. Uh, I think currently still the majority would be US that has to do with our English language center. So we have many English language teachers from the US, UK, Canada or Australia. Uh, for the other nationalities, it's pretty balanced. I, I saw the newest statistics, so there's a couple of people from Germany, like myself. Uh, we have four or five staff members from Malaysia, four or five from, from Indonesia, etc. So New Zealand, it's really across the globe. Um, mainland China, uh, all of our academic staff are, have some sort of an international background since they teach in English. Many of them do have their PhD degrees or postdoc experience, et cetera, uh, abroad. Uh, the percentage is a little bit higher since a lot of our administrative staff is from mainland China. So the majority of administrators will be mainland Chinese, but every staff member in UAC has to speak English because of our very intercultural environment. Um, Imelda asks, um, can, so can our student from Indonesia uh, enter class uh, for study um, in China um, using a student visa? Is the campus in Zhuhai or in China or in Hong Kong? So I think some uh, attendants are confused ah, about- Our campus Zuhai. is in Zhuhai. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We are in mainland China. Um, the degree is from Hong Kong Baptist. I know we, we have the longest name uh, of all schools in yes. mainland China <laughs> uh, because, <laughs> um, and I think there's some initiative. Uh, there's always a discussion, should we change our name? Um, so we are in Zhuhai, that is across uh, the Bay of Hong Kong. Yeah, so Zhuhai is in uh, mainland China. So you would need a student mm -hmm. visa to study uh, in at, at UIC. To, yeah, in mainland China. Yes. So it's not in yes. uh, Hong Kong or, or in Macau, which is a different immigration system. So in right. China, you'd have to get a proper uh, China student visa, which we will help with as well. So once we'll get the application in, and once the student gets the offer, pays the deposit, then we'll um, process, um, and Katerina will help us with the, the process of the student visa. Um, we we'll have question. a team going yep. through the procedures and, and do all paperwork. Yeah, we can help with all of that. That's right. So um, another question, do you think international student can travel or and study on campus in time for the fall semester in 2021? Big question. Oh, I, I wish I could answer that. We, we are optimistic. This is why we are doing this seminar. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. It does look good, but we, we, uh, the honest answer is I cannot give any guarantees. Yep. Um, the, again, the, the indicators from the authorities is they encourage people like me to progress and not to give signals like China is a closed up country. Um, it is not. And for certain countries, we already uh, can get students back. So, for example, our Korean students are back on campus. So right. uh, it was complicated. But, uh, for example, for Korean citizens, it is no, uh, it's possible. That's, that's for exactly. other countries, we have currently no, no way to help the students. Uh, this is why I said, unfortunately, for example, our students who went back home for the last spring break to Bangladesh. They currently have no way to come back to UIC. While they are away, we, we are uh, supporting them in all ways we can. And for example, for all students who were not on campus, 
this semester uh, all classes were conducted in in a blended format so on and offline um, our students could come back to campus um, with more restrictions than before so we have uh, a very high level of safety and health implement uh, re uh, regulations implemented on campus so for example for the first two weeks after the return of students and staff um, we were not allowed especially the students they had to stay in, in the campus premises everybody got COVID tested uh, we have everywhere temperature checks etc um, the future rules will heavily depend on how fast the vaccination programs go. Uh, that's what, what I believe. Currently, uh, from some countries, students cannot return yet. From other countries, um, every incoming passenger has to undergo 14 days quarantine plus seven days home quarantine at the moment uh, because we had those clusters in the north of China. But I think uh, when the application deadline comes in June, until then, I, I, I believe we will have a clearer picture. But uh, currently, I'm, I'm slightly optimistic. I would not say there will be no restrictions at all, but slightly optimistic. We encourage everyone still to make their applications now and as early as possible. That, um, that, that will help yeah. as well. Um, so can international student work part time um, during their study? Nope. Yeah, that's, that's one. <laughs> that's, uh, that's not allowed in China. The only exception is, and we try to find those opportunities, uh, that's again under the un un university umbrella. So we have uh, several businesses on campus, they are student run or they actively employ student helpers. This kind of employment under our umbrella, umbrella is possible, but to say, okay, uh, I get a part-time job in a company, uh, this is nowhere in China allowed. Mm -hmm, that's right. And not uh, common, is, actually this, the workload is too high in China. None of our domestic students is working part-time. Mm. Is there a possibility for international students in China to stay a few years back and practice their skill after graduating from Chinese university? So I think his question is more after graduation, do they give you like a post-study visa? Um, yes, I have to look up the most updated terms, but as far as I'm aware, I looked it up a couple of months ago, uh, they normally you cannot get a work permit in China without two years of relevant work experience, but uh, graduates from Chinese universities uh, have exceptions. So I think it's similar to other countries like in Australia, uh, one or two years until you find a, a job uh, that should be possible. Uh, but please let me do uh, my homework. I will look up the exact terms and share with Bo, and Bo maybe can channel this. Um, but uh, it is possible for graduates from Chinese universities now. Yeah. Um, and another question on work. Uh, in the, um, is there any work uh, integrated learning uh, during the studies? Can you specify? Uh, I think he means like, um, uh, like internships that's part of the, the curriculum whereby you get um, credits? Depends on the major. Some majors do have compulsory internships. Uh, for example, our Teaching English as Second Language program, students have to do a practicum. That mm -hmm. is a formalized uh, year-long course where students get feedback and write their intern reports. So some programs do, others do not. Some programs have internships as major elective. Yeah. Our, our translation students also have, have to do internships. Yeah. Um, all programs highly encourage internships. Mm -hmm. Great. And then last question from Imelda was, uh, please share this presentation uh, layout to us. Yes, uh, Imelda, I will, I will send that to you. Uh, Katerina will share yeah. this presentation with me. And uh, for the record, I will share this with everyone as well. I want everyone to um, take time to have a look at this. And um, especially if you have more detailed questions, you can ask me. Um, and I'll certainly be working uh, very closely with Katarina and Jesse um, in the next uh, few months or for this year um, to really work on um, promoting uh, and, and boosting um, UIC. It's a partner that we're really excited to work with. And we know it's a fantastic university. And I know students will really love to study there. Um, 
And it's such an exciting place to be, um, China. And I, uh, having lived there for a long time myself, I, I know more and more students will like to go there in the future. So that will be it from uh, us today. We're a little bit over time, but that's good. And um, thank you so much, uh, Katarina, for your, your time. Um, and I'll be working uh, very closely with you. And if I have any questions myself, I will ask you too. So thank you. Yeah, yeah please do. And, and also uh, to all people in the audience, just let Bo know. We are very happy and also, you know, some specific feedback or could you clarify? Uh, we are very happy to do so. And um, yeah. Fantastic. So thank yeah. you so much. And uh, yeah. thank you both for hosting this. Great, no problem. All right. Um, thank you, everyone. And um, happy new year once again to everybody. And uh, let's yeah. stay in touch. Um, and if you've got any questions, please do ask myself or Ivy or Niranjan or whoever is um, looking after, after your agency. Um, and it's bye for now. And I'll see you at the next uh, webinar. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye-bye.